finally here guys. The day has come to do the installation of all installations. The one I'm most excited about. Time to install that lift kit. Shut up and sit down. What's up everybody, this is Adam with Thrugal Productions and today I've got another installation video for you. We're going to everybody's favorite install, the thing that makes these Jeeps look amazing, the lift kit. And here it is, laid out for you in all of its glory. Take it in. Alright, so what I've got today is the Icon. So what I was going to tell you before the audio went out was that we're installing the Icon Vehicle Dynamics 2.0 Aluminum Series lift kit. This is stage two out of eight stages, which includes the front control arms and the two rear sway bar links, along with your standard lift kit setup. All right guys, so since I'm doing this out of my own garage and I don't have access to a fully built garage with a hydraulic lift that lifts the whole vehicle, I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way with a jack and a couple jack stands. You hear my dogs crying because they want to be part of the video. Since I only have two jack stands, I'm gonna start with the rear because the rear sway bar links have to be used on the front end. So we gotta get the rear end done so I can do the front end. So let's get started. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, disconnect the rear track bar using 21 millimeter socket and wrench. Let's lift the sucker. Alright, as you can see, the vehicle is on jack stands with the jack here under the pumpkin or the diff. Just a little protection. Um, I should probably put it a little bit closer, but it seems pretty stable, so just gotta get to work. Do this quickly. So, next, let's take off these tires. Okay, so next up, remove the rear sway bar links using 18 millimeter wrench and 18 millimeter socket. This is how you're gonna remove it from the axle. All right, you just saw me do that. So now the top, this top portion of the uh, rear sway bar link needs to be removed with a six millimeter Allen wrench and an 18 millimeter re regular wrench or an 18 millimeter wrench and an eight millimeter bit. <clears throat> there it goes. All right. Remember to save this and the hardware for later as you're gonna need it on the front end. Next thing up, remove the parking brake cable from the parking brake link on the brake drum. So we're talking about, oh, where is it? So we are talking about that little guy you gotta remove there we go all right so next you see this guy right here the parking cable where it's connected to this bracket we gotta disconnect that so when we droop the axle it the uh it doesn't pull the parking brake down with it there we go okay all right well Oh damn, it's a little dirty, isn't it, huh? Next step, to remove this cable from the differential. It's only for the Rubicon models. There we go. Up and out, there we go, got it. All right, so the next step is we gotta get these shocks out. So we're gonna use an 18 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter wrench to get the lower out, to get the lower bolts out first. And then we'll see what the tension's like and see if we can rip out the top half as well. Okay, so to get to the top mount of the shocks, you're gonna have to remove, if you haven't already, you're gonna have to remove this guy to kind of get in there. So that takes eight millimeter sockets. All right, so you can see that we have the stock sway bar links off and the stock shocks off. 
So if we come over here, you can see the difference between our stock shocks and our Icon shocks. You can see that the Icon shocks are providing us a couple more inches of length, which equates to a couple more inches of travel and obviously our lift. So that's what we're looking forward to putting in. Here comes the moment that everybody loves, right? Lowering your axle so that your springs can come out. I don't like to use the spring coil compressor thing because that always wants to kill you. Um, so we're just gonna lower this axle and hope that these re rear coils just fall right out. Let's drop it just a little bit more to make it a little bit easier. Oh. Just like that guys, it came right out. Let's go grab the other one. Doo, 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 doo. Simple as that. Okay, now we gotta grab the isolator out of there. There we go. Got it. All right, guys. We have all of our factory hardware off. The sway bar links, the shocks, the springs. Let's do the comparison between the Icon springs and the stock springs. So you can see here, there's some obvious length differences, right? A couple inches right here. More coils on the Icon springs. And you can tell here that the distance between coils changes about right here. So you get that little dual rate action when you're about to bottom out. So looks good. As you can see, our springs are on. Thankfully, now it's going to put on the shocks. Bum, bum, bum. So you see this little part down here? See that little part right there? I don't know which side goes which way. One side's a little bit wider than the other side or a little thicker. So I'm going to throw it on there and just see if I can figure it out. All right, so I've got the top of the shocks installed just loosely and letting the bottom hang so that I have more space to get to this sway bar link bracket right here and here. So I don't want to have to fight with this area, leave this open so I can get the sway bars in much easier. All right guys, what we have next is building up our rear sway bar links. Our new rear sway bar links from Icon, which is pretty exciting. It's a little bit of a, of a lean. You see if I place these two together, there's the bottom is separated a little bit. Yeah, see, so there's obviously a right way and a wrong way to do this. Before we get to the point of installing it on the vehicle, we need to actually install our bushings. Luckily, Icon's been nice enough to do some pre-greasing and pre-assembly for us. So I've heard of these kits where you have the bushings, then you have the sleeve, and they're not installed yet. So you'd have to grease them and shove them in there, and it's not fun. Luckily, Icon's already done part of that for us. So what we need to do is take them apart, stick them in like that, right? But just to be extra careful, I'm gonna add a little bit more grease. I don't know how long these have been sitting around. Just to be, do a little bit of overkill. Let's open up our massive can of grease. Get my neighbor over there yelling at me. All right. That's way too much grease. You know who's got experience, buddy? Yeah, that's Probably smarter to do this on a clean surface than on this dirty ass bench like I'm doing it. For some reason, they keep wanting to slide apart. I don't get it. Oh, victory! I gotta go wash my hands, man. It's nasty. Ugh, I have a feeling it's gonna take a while for that grease to get off my hands. So the provided hardware is gonna go on the top and then we use the factory hardware to mount to the bottom here. Make sure the head of the bolt is facing the wheel. You need a 16, 18 millimeter socket or a wrench. Shocks are in, upper mount of the sway bar link is in. Now we just gotta do the lower, the lower one right here.
All right, we got him in. It's hot out here today, Jesus Christ. Next up, bump stops. So what you're gonna need to install your bump stops, the instructions call for a 5.30 seconds Allen wrench, but I'm using a four and a half millimeter. You will also need a half inch open wrench. All right guys, we're almost there, I promise. So if you look, we have all of our important hardware installed. Our shocks, our sway bar links, our springs. Now, to make sure we're safe on the trail, we gotta get it all torqued down. First to be torqued are the shocks. Uh, the upper shock mount needs to be torqued to 81 foot-pounds, and the lower shock mount needs to be torqued to 80 foot-pounds. There we go, got that one. I feel like I'm in mechanic yoga right now. It's probably a horrible way to do this, but whatever. There it is. Love that sound. <sighs> All right, so rear shocks are torqued. Now we just gotta torque the sway bar links. Icon has asked that we torque the upper uh, mount to 65 foot-pounds and the bottom to uh, the factory, which is 69 foot-pounds. There we go. Everything's torqued down. Freaking tired already. Um, just gonna go back through, double check that everything's installed correctly, everything's heated correctly. Make sure no wires on the way. Gotta reconnect my rear differential cable. Gotta reconnect my uh, emergency part cable. And then we're gonna get this Jeep back on the ground. All right guys, so we're in day two of this build. I could have finished it yesterday, it wouldn't have taken that long, but I got caught up watching college football. I had to watch my Gators play. They won, obviously. And I got a little too uh, deep into the adult beverages. So I figured I'd save it for the morning. So today, we're gonna finish this Jeep off. We gotta do the front end of the suspension. Let's get it started. So my lovely wife Daisy wanted to help out in day two of this suspension build. So this should get interesting. I've lost my helper guys. Got the vehicle up and now she's running away from me. See? She ran away from me. I'm doing house things. <laughs> in between. Alright, next thing. And we gotta change out the front sway bar links. So I gave Daisy instruction on how to take off the sway bar link. And look what I come to find. Daisy. I'm hungry. The sway bar link is not removed. I'll do it in a second. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm hungry. I haven't had anything to eat yet. I'm almost done. This is why it takes all day long. <laughs> That's a good shot right there. There's nothing up my nose. So now Adam is doing the same thing that I did, but on the other side. So everybody can see this lower sway bar link mount has a flag nut attached because obviously it'd be kind of difficult to get a wrench or a socket in this side. So luckily Jeep has thought had the foresight to put a flag nut here. So now you only need the 18mm wrench to get this thing off. All right guys, so next we're doing, we're gonna remove the brake line brackets from the lower control arms. Alright, so am I doing it on this side? Yep. Daisy's using gloves because her manicure is at stake here. 
We already have one casualty. All right, guys, lower control arms are off. Let's do a little quick comparison of the old ones versus the new ones. You see the old ones in the middle. Bends are pretty similar. New ones are a little bit longer, which is what we expect. Since we're lifting the vehicle, we'll need to uh, have longer control arms, push the uh, tires and we, the axle f forward to be centered in the uh, wheel well there. So looks pretty good. Let's keep going. Dogs are crazy. We need 18 millimeter wrench and 18 millimeter socket is perfect. That's what we need. Cool. Brent, remove the shocks now. Can we try the gun? <laughs> okay. Take two. I'm trying to loosen this nut. The, what is it called? Drill bit? No. The impact, impact gun? Impact gun was too big. Ow. That's what she said. Ooh, I saw some movement. It's going. There it is. Hugh Alicia Keys, this girl is on fire. This girl is on fire. All right, so Daisy got the lower shock mount off, but now she's having trouble getting the upper shock mount off. There isn't as much leverage here. Get it, girl. Almost. It's so, un like, this is such an awkward position. <laughs> Daisy's learning the frustration of working on a vehicle. I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do it. All I right, need your help. Right. <laughs> I hate asking the man for help, but... Uh, I swear to God, if you get this on the first try, it's because I loosened it for you. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. He's trying the monkey wrench, right? Is that what it's called? No. Trying the socket wrench. Oh, the socket wrench. What is a monkey wrench? With all of the force of Hercules. The name of this car is Maximus. Whether named formally or informally by me, it's really acting like a Maximus right now. Oh, yeah. Got some movement. You're so strong. Cuddle time during. Ooh. Yay. Aww. <laughs> Alrighty? Yeah. Woohoo! We did it. <laughs> Alright, Daisy. Lower control arms are in. Now you get your first opportunity mm -hmm. to try to torque something to spec. And it's going to be a big one. 125 foot pounds for the lower control arms. Daisy's never used a torque wrench before. She has no idea what she's getting herself into. I don't even so. know what it looks like. Here we go. All right, so Daisy's setting the uh, torque wrench to 125 foot-pounds. Oh! Yeah, be careful. Ow, 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 ow. I'm not doing this. You gotta be careful, baby. I'm not doing this. You hit your ow. knuckles? No, I hit my finger. Like, I landed ah. on my finger. Ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't. I can't do any of this. I can't be helpful in any way. All right, let me see. Push that in like that. All right, now let's top this side. That was terrible. <laughs> that wasn't that bad. I hurt my finger. Is it okay? It's fine now, but it's gonna bruise. Right. Thank God my nails are painted, so you won't see like a purple nail. Right. There you go. You got it. Woohoo! Daisy did it. it. Daisy did it. Control arms are out, shocks are out. Let's do a side by side comparison here. Before, dun, 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 dun. after. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is Fair before enough. and this is after. <laughs> Perfect. So you can see the obvious different chain, difference in length here that gives us our height. So, and our extra ride, uh, extra travel. Obviously, these gloves are too big for my hands. Thank you, Vanna White. Anytime. 
All right, Daisy, next thing we gotta do is remove the the electrical plug from the front differential. So with that, see that little, this plug right here? Mm -hmm. We gotta remove it. So there's a little white patch up here mm -hmm. that needs to be pulled out. And then you press down on it to pull the whole plug out. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, now push down on the white part and pull the whole plug out. Perfect. Cool. This is just really dirty. Yep. It's from all our off-roading. Yep. I just made my first major contribution to this project by asking the question, why? So I had to unplug whatever this is called, some sort of differential. Differential plug, yep. Differential plug. But I was curious, like, why did we need to unplug this? Because we're going to lower this entire thing down. Well, there's also this piece that needs to be unplugged, which is a top clip. And the reason why is because as we lower it, now that can be free and not coming and falling down with the rest of it. Yeah, so now we're going to do that. Get it. Yeah. There, we there go. you go. Perfect. See? So now it's fully free, whereas before it was just kind of halfway free. Good job, Daisy. Woo! So Adam, what are we about to do? All right, so now we're gonna lower the axle so we can get the springs out. Just, and I know this position's a little overkill, but I just wanna make sure that I'm not overextending anything while I'm doing this. The right side's falling more than the, lo than the other side is. Okay. Can you pull that spring off or no? I don't know, let me try. <laughs> I see this. I saw this starting to like. Is this whole thing supposed to come off? You can. So you get the spring on that side? Yeah. Cool. Okay. There you go. Daisy's got that spring off. Uh, it's got, oh, there it is. <laughs> nice. Cool. Look at that. All right, now we just gotta get the other side. Okay, there you go. You got it. Sometimes you just have to force your way into things, but not not when women say no. And just like that, it is finally out. Perfect. Good job, husband. All right, everything that needs to be out is out. Only so now we just gotta put everything back in. Only took us three hours. Yep. All right, guys. So we have both front coils removed. We put the uh, rubber upper isolator back on the coil bucket without the spring yet. For the passenger side, they provided this shim. And on the instructions, it says to remove the tips of the rubber isolator. I'm assuming that it means from cutting off these little tops right here. Um, not sure why it's super important. I can't think of another reason why to cut the tip off of this guy, but not gonna argue with it. Um, I can't imagine it means cut this leading edge off. That would make no sense, right? So we're gonna we're, let's uh, get right to installing these coils. All right, here we go. Time to install the coils. First time Daisy's doing this. Yes. Adam so, did the other side. Here we go. Top side numbers are part numbers are right side up, so we know she's doing it correctly. Here we go. Here's the struggle. Uh oh. Got it. There you go. Look at that. Okay. Now make sure it's seated correctly. And this is aligned. That's seated. All right. Is it lined up up top? Yeah. All right. Let's lift the sucker. All right. Moment of truth, everybody. Here goes the lift. We want to make sure everything is seating correctly. So we got the springs loaded in. We reconnected the lower control arm. Now we're coming around this way with the plane coming over our head. Daisy's now going to install the new uh, shocks. Let's do it. Got it. All right, so we got to continue. We have to lower, keep lowering the axle. You showing them my muscles? Yep. All the muscles. I've got big guns. Ow. All right, everybody. Daisy's just finished torquing or setting the torque wrench. We're gonna torque all the uh, shocks down now. So here we go. Is it called torque or twerk? It's called torque. Is uh, it not a dance? Okay. No, you just sounded like you were saying twerk. It's a twerking. 
There it is. Woo! Nice. That feels so good. <laughs> Beastly. That feels so good. All right. I'm like starting to sweat now. <laughs> I have like a little bit of sweat going on in my neck. Uh, we are now installing the bumps on spacers in the coils, so let's do that. There you go. Center it and put that screw through, that bolt through. Putting my manicure at stake. Next time, get your nails done after Jeep Adventures, not before. Yeah, you heard that guy? Make sure you, guys, make sure you schedule your pedicures or manicures accordingly. And girls who said that they can't work girls. on this. No, they can. Breaking down barriers. All right, so now Daisy is putting on our front sway links, which are actually our rear sway links, but they're moving to the front. All right, guys, we're finally at the home stretch. Every, all the hardware is on. This torque, the uh, sway bar links, and reconnect our electronics so like the uh diff plug that we just connected now we can put tires on and get the heck out of here yeah three two one there we go guys well we're at the end of the build so you can tell daisy's pretty much had it i'm tired the uh hungry. and they're hungry I want to go too. Oh well, everyone, that's the install of our new Icon Vehicle Dynamics lift kit. Special thanks to Icon for helping us out with this kit. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channels. We definitely got more videos coming. And as always, we hope to see you guys on the trail.